This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Not all close calls make for a riveting story. Take one of the closest calls I ever had. It was winter after dark in southeast Alaska, and my brothers and I, along with my 2B wife, were running in a skiff on the way home from doing some deer hunting. We hit a submerged log. The engine shot up into the boat. The boat went down and scooped up a bow full of water, but we didn't sink. If we had, there is no question. Everyone on that boat would have died that night. But all you can really say is, man, we hit a log. It's a short story. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got storytellers who experience so many close calls that they seem to become immune to the danger or peril in those stories. Such is the case with my friend Buck Bowden, an outfitter and homesteader in remote Alaska. He's been living in the Alaskan wilderness since his teens, when a judge was going to send him away to a juvenile detention center unless his parents got him out of town. He was sent to his godparents up in Nome, Alaska, and there he found his calling and a life lived extremely close to nature, hunting, trapping, and fishing for his sustenance and livelihood. Due to the nature of his lifestyle and the harsh, isolated environment where he makes his home, He's racked up so many close calls in the ensuing decades that you wind up bracketing them into certain categories. You've got Buck's aircraft stories. Times Buck came close to starving while living off the land. Times Buck got stranded in the wilderness because of natural disasters. And then you have a richly populated chapter called Buck's Close Calls with Bears. You'll notice here that Buck has a very quiet, unassuming tone in telling these stories. Encounters that would be downright terrifying to most people, or that would give years of material to a writer like me, seem to just roll off his back. That's partly due to his temperament, and partly to the fact that he's just had so many of these encounters. As he explains, Buck also regards bears as his friends, especially black bears, which are generally harmless. And when he's been in situations where he has had to kill bears in self-defense, it's with reluctance in a measure of guilt. Like the other times where a bear got a hold of me, you know, I mean, it's really funny, laying prone, and I'm uh, replacing a um, some pilings up underneath the barn. And so I'm laying down. I've got half my body down inside the hole, so I'm just prone, not not moving. I'm digging out whole dirt from the bottom of the hole. (laughs) The next thing I know, I was like, whoop. It's like it's like I was on a bungee course, somebody pulling me away from the hole, and the bear had come along, and, and he had, I still got the scars on my leg, he got a hold of my leg and was pulling me back away from the hole. And it was pretty obvious that he had thought I was um, dead, I think, because I wasn't moving, and I was prone, and, and it was just like, wow, look, a sandwich, you know, and he just grabbed a hold of me and started pulling me back and scraped all the skin off my, on my shins and all that. I just turned around and started kicking him in the face, and he was just as shocked as I was. He uh, was like, it's alive, you know, and he let go of me, and he just ran off into the bushes, you know. 